Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to Conan Exiles. Conan Exiles has gone free for this month of April 2019 on the PlayStation 4 if you own the PlayStation Plus. So here is a quick guide to everything you need to know about Conan Exiles before you start playing. Let's start off with the very basics. Conan Exiles is a survival game and it has different game modes that you can play. You can play single player co-op which allows up to four other players to join your world. But co-op is really not the best way to play this if you've got friends as the world will shut down every time you log on and off of Conan Exiles. If you're a lone gamer and you generally just like playing on your own then single player is a good way to test everything out and you can use spawn commands to spawn in items if you do find yourself a little bit stuck. Otherwise Conan Exiles is best played online. There are three different game modes in Conan Exiles Online. PvP focuses on all out PvP. You can kill each other, you can kill other players, you can destroy other people's bases. Conan Exiles does things a little bit differently from some other games though. Its PvP has windows, so you can only destroy people's bases on normal PvP during these windows. In America the raid windows are in the evening times obviously and the same goes for the UK so be careful if you're jumping on a different server from your region. But during these windows you can go and attack anyone's base, destroy it and do what you want. If you come across any players out of these windows you can still attack them but you won't be able to destroy their bases. Some servers have a maximum limit of 50 but the general RAND number is around 40 players per server. There are plenty of servers to choose from whether or not you're going to play official game modes or join some private dedicated servers. So if you're choosing an official server just make sure you've ticked official here and basically find one that's maybe got a good or to high population of players. Official servers are pretty grindy and you will need a clan. You can have a maximum of 10 players per clan and it really is the true Conan Exiles experience. However, maybe you really don't like all out PvP and you don't want to work for months on end and get all your stuff destroyed by someone coming and attacking your base. Then PvE conflict is your next best bet. This can be anywhere between 3 and 5 hours depending on what server you're playing on. You get notifications during the game telling you that the PvP is about to begin. And at no time can you destroy any other players bases. And then finally we have PvE. PvE there is no conflict between you and any other players, it's all just about taking on the enemies and the NPCs in the world. I've done a detailed guide on settings in Conan Exiles, go and check that out if you want more information about exactly how to set up your game. One thing you should know is that nudity is around. You can change it to none, partial or full nudity, so be careful you may be in for a shock if you start seeing some boobies and penises flying around. You can also change lots of the game settings much more in fact during the game itself on single player mode. When you start a new game you'll have the option to make it to a co-op game or just a single player game. Don't worry it does mean you can open it up in the future. Single player offers a bunch of different options. Basically levels of difficulty. You can choose civilized which is basically the easy mode. You get lots more experience. You won't need to eat and drink as much and you'll do a lot more damage to enemies. You'll also convert your thralls which are basically your slaves. You don't drop any items when you die and your buildings don't become abandoned over time. A game mechanic in Conan Exiles is called the Purge. This is when enemies will randomly come and attack the biggest bases on the map. This turns this feature off so the Purge will never attack your base. Decadent is the default way to play Conan Exiles. The Purge will occasionally come and attack your base. You will drop all your items when you die and you've got to grab them from your body and it's generally the borderline stats. Then you've got Barbaric which is hard mode. Enemies are much much harder to kill. You're going to have to eat and drink a lot more and you'll only get experience when you do stuff not just simply running around. You can change all sorts of things just by going to custom and this is the video that I've done in the past showing you exactly what every multiplier does so you can get the most use out of it. I'll leave the link for that video in the description box down below, go and check it out. Conan Exiles has been out officially on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox for nearly a year now. During that time they've had many updates to the game, adding more new features and items. They've also added brand new DLC. These DLCs are half cosmetic items. I say half because they actually give you access to more items including buildable pieces as well as armor and weapons. But the armor and weapons are supposedly comparable to other items in the game and so it only gives you more choice rather than necessarily a big plus against other players. These DLC packs cost around £8.99 so they are not free. 
which I think is roughly around $10, but I could be mistaken on that. There have been some teething problems with this though. Each time one of these DLCs has launched, it has been discovered that some of these items have had some minor benefits. These have since been patched out, but it was a concern. So if you're really interested in DLC, you can go and pick up some of them. But if you're wondering why players are running around in armor and weapons that you can't find, that is why. Now, religion is an important factor in Conan Exiles. It's going to determine what god you have, basically what avatar you're going to use to attack other players, or possibly just to use against other creatures. You can change your religion pretty much at any time in the game, and there are in fact six different avatar gods that you can choose from. There is also a seventh final god that you can only unlock by completing a dungeon in the game. Jabal Sag is his name and he is a formidable opponent and was the last god to be added to the Conan Exiles game. I'm going to go over each one of these gods and avatars in a separate video, but basically go ahead and read the description and choose the one that you like the sound of. It's got a pretty decent character customization screen, so go ahead and play around with it if you really want to. During the year of the Cobra, a prisoner captured by unknown means was transported into the exiled lands, crucified. And that is the start of Conan Exiles. You are tethered to a cross, left to die. Conan will set you free and basically it's your job to run around the Conan Exiles lands trying to find a way to escape. And that's what the whole premise for Conan Exiles is. You'll notice you've got an amulet on your arm. You are trying to escape this land. You can see I'm way down near the bottom and that's pretty much the starting zone where everyone will spawn the first time they play Conan Exiles. All around the map to stop you from leaving is a green barrier. You basically die when you go through this. So be careful if you do get a little bit close as it only takes an accidental step. So you've started in Conan Exiles and take a look at these. These are tablet points. They're basically going to give you lots of information when you interact with them. These are your journey steps. Completing each one of these is going to give you some experience. You'll also gain experience just by existing, depending on what game mode it is, and obviously doing things like crafting, fighting, and taking down enemies. Each time you gain experience and you unlock a journey stone, you'll gain tribute points and feat levels. Now, tributes are how you build your character. Do you want to go for just really good accuracy with a bow and throwing weapons? Are you going to be someone that runs around very quickly and in combat is really fast? Or are you going to focus on survival, making sure you can carry as much as possible? These can all be boosted and pumped up. You have a maximum of 390 attribute points. Now some of these stages are going to require a lot more than just maybe 5 points. Simply choose what one you want once you've got some to spend and that's how you upgrade your character and choose different builds. You can take potions which are yellow lotus leaf potions. These can basically reset your stats and you can create new character builds. Your feats are how you unlock items and equipment, basically what suits your playstyle. Alongside the building structures, you also have the ability to choose what weapons you want to master. Some of them do need early ones to unlock. Basically anything that's green is unlockable right now. And if you want something that's yellow, you may need to go through a few steps to unlock that one first, but it is available. Red is simply locked because you're not at that level yet. The level cap is 60. And again, you will need to use a yellow lotus flowered potion if you want to reset your stats. Maybe you don't want to use lots of swords and you want to try focusing on something else, then you might need to use a yellow potion if you get to that level. However, Conan Exiles development team recently updated the game and they've made it that you can actually find special items in the game. Defeating special versions of creatures in the game, you will get something called Fragment of Power. This gives you an extra 10 feet points per use. So even though you're at level 60, there is a way for you to unlock pretty much every single item in the game. If you want to have a check on what your stats are and if you've got any status effects from enemies or potions that you've drunk, you can do that in the stats panel here. This is how you can check how effective your builds are. A really good way to level up is to just complete lots of these chapter stones. It's pretty basic stuff at the beginning, but as you advance, you'll start unlocking more and more. Points of interest are really important in Conan Exiles. Always go towards one and try and unlock it if you see it on the map. Pressing the right D-pad, you can see the map in all of its glory. There are four big, huge biomes, each with their sub-biomes in the map. You've got the jungles to the east. You've then got the majority of the map at the south, which is desert. 
followed by lots of marshland and grasslands to the north and in the furthest north you've got the frozen colds and the volcano. Conan Exiles pretty much relies on the notion that going north you'll find more and more difficult creatures. You will find even more unique creatures in the jungles of the east, it all just depends on where you want to go and what you want to do. But the southlands are where you start all along this river are pretty much the starting grounds. This is where you want to level up your character a little bit, craft, gather, and basically just get used to Conan Exiles before adventuring on adventures all around the map. The inventory system is pretty simple in Conan Exiles, but it does have a radial dial. By tapping L1, you can bring it up, and that's how you equip items into your radio dial so that you can start using them. PC has just a direct hotbar on the bottom of the screen. Conan Exiles is a survival game. You're going to need plenty of water and plenty of food on your travels. The top indicators indicate what you exactly are missing. You've got water, food, weight and temperature. Pretty bog standard stuff. Together just simply go around pressing the square button and you'll pick up the usual sort of things like plant fibres, wood and seeds. Don't worry about him, he's just here to scare you. Well, at the start anyway, you may run into them a little bit later. There are lots of help prompts on the screen, if you prefer to play without these though you can turn them off. Go to your settings tab in the start menu and click show contextual controls. This will take off the help screens. As I said you can actually muck around in single player if you want to change in the game. There's a whole host of different options and like I said go and watch that video if you want to see more about this. One crucial thing though if you really want to get to grips with Conan Exiles and play and test some stuff out you can put cheat mode on which enables you to spawn a bunch of stuff in. Simply go to general click on make me admin come out of there press start again and you'll have the admin panel. This is where you can put a bunch of different cheats on including lots of food and water. You can make yourself less heavy or able to carry more, give yourself the minimum of health, the maximum of health, more feet points if you want, or more levels. You can also fly around the map, walk, etc. Make yourself a demigod, invisible, or don't worry about stamina. This will all be in the video that I've mentioned a couple times now. On the right hand side you've got your items that you can spawn in, resources, gear, building pieces, it's pretty substantial. One of the best things about Conan Exiles is this sheer amount of items in the game. It is one of the best games out there for so many different weapons and armor types. So play around, try some of these out, see what effects they give you. If you're playing on a dedicated server, you can click the player list. And if you really want to muck around with the creatures and the NPCs in the game, you can pretty much spawn in every single one of them. But let's try and keep this a little bit less cheaty cheaty. Keep heading north, away from the desert dunes, and you will finally come to the river. This is pretty much where you're going to be making your life in the early stages of Conan Exiles. I've done a bunch of guides and tips videos in the past, showing you exactly how to get the most XP and where you should be going or aiming for. You'll see on the right hand side you've got a pretty basic amount of items to craft, like certain weapons, items and armours. When you craft something for the first time, if there's any space in your armour slots, it will go straight in there. And the same thing again, useful items will appear in your radial dial just by holding the one button, using the right stick to choose what you want, and then let go. Conan has a fairly decent combat system where you can dodge strikes as well as do a combination of heavy and normal attacks. You can also kick opponents too, and it's one of the better features of the game is the combat. If an item has anything for it to loot, it will pop up in a little dialogue box. Eating different food types will replenish your health. So it's definitely worth making sure you've got an abundance of food, preferably cooked. But there is so much choice in what you can make in terms of potions, stews and soups. You can also eat a bunch of bugs as well, not to mention worker bees. Now thralls are where Conan Exiles really excels. It's what you're going to be spending the most of your time actually getting and preparing. They're not exactly the best companions to have with you when fighting other players, but you're going to need some of these thralls if you want to craft really high tier items. There are pets in the game, you can go and tame creatures, but they act pretty much like thralls. You can only have one thrall or one pet follow you at a same time. You can pick up your thralls and your pets and you can place them at different points, but once you've placed them, that is it. You can't then transport them back into your inventory. They will start following you on foot or teleport towards you next time. If you have more than one thrall or one pet, they will stay in the area that you place them. So think about what you're doing strategically with your pets and your thralls. It's basically a good idea to keep one following you at all times and keep a couple in terms of backup in case you get into a fight. 
but just be prepared to leave them where they are until you can go and get them back to your base later on. At level 10 you'll unlock the ability to actually get your own thralls. By unlocking the thrall takeoff feat, this gives you access to all of these items which you'll need. A truncheon, fibre bindings, as well as the lesser wheel of pain. I'm starting out with a humble sword here, but thralls are so important because they are going to help you craft better equipment and better weapons. There's all types of different varieties, but you can basically work your way up to get flawless and legendary weapons. Thralls can help craft some of these, and some of them you're going to have to go and find out in the wild. There are a lot of named weapons in the game as well, and these all have special abilities or different uses. So, once you get to level 10, this is what you really should be focusing on, is getting lots of thralls as well as building a good base to have them set up. Find yourself a little encampment of NPC enemies, take out one or two of them. You can lock on by right clicking the right stick, and it is a good idea to maybe separate them a little bit in the early game. Now there are combos in Conan Exiles as well. By tapping the L1 button as a light attack and then the L2 button you can often do a decent combo depending on what weapon you have. But now we've got him on his own, let's see if we can knock him out. You can see the grey bar appearing above his head, that's pretty much his stamina or his defence. When that drains you'll be able to knock him out. And there we go, we finally knocked him out. It can take a while and as you get better at the game it will become a lot easier. Once you've got one unlocked, you then simply have to put the bindings on him. Equip them into your hand, and then you can now drag the Stygian Fire. You have to basically drag them back to your base or if you've got a Wheel of Pain. This is where you're going to also need to put your Wheel of Pain down. The Wheel of Pain is exactly what you need to get your Thrall trained up. Once you've placed it down, just simply bring the Thrall nearby, click square on the Wheel of Pain, and you'll see that your Thrall has been put into the inventory box. Now you've just simply got to put some food in there and he will over time be trained up and become your thrall. I've done guides just on thralls as well. I'm going to leave all of these links in the description box down below. There are different levels of thralls. They go all the way up to tier 4. Tier 4 thralls are generally named thralls. So if you come across an NPC that happens to have some sort of magnificent name, they are likely to be something of real value to try and get hold of. There are all sorts of different thralls in the game. You've got alchemists, archers, armorers, bearers, carpenters, blacksmiths, fighters, entertainers, cooks, priests, tanners, smelters, and taskmasters. They all each have their individual uses. You'll also come across actual NPCs that are friendly. These are trader NPCs or merchants. You'll find most of these in the Septimaru city, which is all the way to the west. There are all different types of races in Conan Exiles and depending where you are on the map you'll run into more certain kinds. Conan Exiles of course has a day and night cycle. Just like pretty much every survival game out there you want to be getting resources like wood and twigs as well as lots of fibre. You'll notice I just got some bark from using a pick. Certain different types of weapons will give you different results. You'll get more wood using an axe but you have more chance of getting bark when using a pick. This also applies to other ways when you're skinning animals and even applies to religious items like religious daggers. These can be unlocked later on and these will give you different results when you're harvesting creatures. The square button is your gather button so use it to get water as well as gather any bushes or pick up any items from dead bodies or anything lying around. Once you've unlocked the construction feat you can go ahead and start choosing more. Your best bet is to go for lots of the crafting benches, these are going to keep teaching you a variety of different items and things. Now if you do want to change your religion at some point during the game, you're going to have to find special thralls that will teach you their religion. And this is pretty much how you unlock all of the different avatars items. It won't take you long at all to gather some resources to build a basic hut. Again, one of the best features about Conan Exiles is, is building. It's got really a lot of different options and it's pretty simple and easy to use. It clearly labels exactly what wall is outside facing, and it's definitely one of the better ones. And there you go, I've crafted my very first basic house. Now there's different tiers of building materials, and obviously if you're playing on PvP servers, the higher the tier, the more longer it's gonna take for enemies to get through. There are three different tiers of building kind of exiles, with some of the tiers giving you different ingredients to craft different types of building pieces. Tier 1 is basic sandstone. You can demolish these with steel weapons or explosives and orbs. 
Tier 2 is going to give you access to stone brick build pieces. These are immune to steel weapons and you're going to need explosives to break through these ones. You can get two different varieties when you go into this version. You've got insulated wood and then you've got basically normal stone brick walls. Depending on where you're building, you may need either version. Stone brick or stone varieties of building pieces will keep you cool. So when you're in the south in the desert, this is what's best to build in. But as you go up more north, you may want to start building in wooden structures. These will keep you much warmer in the colds. Something pretty vital that you don't think you'll need much of early on is a repair hammer. This basically gives you the option to see exactly how much health each build piece has. The final tier is reinforced. You get this at level 30 and unlocking the master mason set. You can get reinforced stone walls or you can make reinforced black ice. And just to show you the difference between the top tier build pieces, a black ice reinforced door is going to be 25,000, but a normal wooden door is going to be 2,500. Obviously some of this stuff is going to be much later on in the game, but I just wanted to give you a heads up of what to expect. These pieces here can still be destroyed with explosives, but you're going to need a hell of a lot of them. And normally this is where you're going to bring in your avatars or your gods to attack people's bases. You also need to unlock the recipes for some of this stuff as well. And you'll find them on NPCs and in certain locations all around the map. So whenever you see a touchstone tablet that we saw at the beginning of the video, make sure you go towards it. And basically anything that seems to have some sort of note, make sure you read it as it may be teaching you something. And that is pretty much it as a beginner's guide to Conan Exiles. Start off gathering yourself around these early starting lands. If you're feeling really adventurous, try and get north as early as possible. That's where you'll find lots of iron and lots of the resources you need to progress. Keep an eye on different thralls and what levels they are and if you need them to craft better weapons. And if you're playing on PvP servers, make sure you try and upgrade to the best items possible. I will be taking a fresh look at Conan Exiles. It's been a while since I put some serious time into it. So stay tuned for either some live streams, let's plays and some more guides and tutorials. Hope this has helped you out for the basics of all you PlayStation fans out there just picking it up. Good luck and let me know how you get on. Until next time, Ratbags, I will see you for another Conan Exiles video very soon. Laters!